Hello, Zach Murphy here, and this is one of my other videos I'm putting together. This one here is one I promised in one of my previous videos, and I definitely kind of delayed putting this one out there. Um, this one is on the subject of Halloween. As many of you know, I'm publishing this video in October. It is the month of Halloween. And I first want to make it clear that this video is not necessarily... For the unbeliever, someone who is not genuinely a Christian professing that they have repented of their sins and put their faith in Jesus Christ. This is for those who claim to be Christian. And, you know, some people already grasp this knowledge or wisdom about concerning this specific holiday. And I want to say that I'm not trying to be completely condemning with this. This is something that needs to be said. There's a lot of things that need to be said about the church world today. And I really encourage Christians to really listen to this message here. It is so important. It is so important, this message here. And I myself was once blinded about this subject here with Halloween. And I myself, you know, thought it was okay. And I was wrong. And I want to make it clear to believers why it is not okay. And before I get into let's pray and we'll get into right what I have prepared. So dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time to share your word over social media, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that everybody watching this video, that you will open up their ears to understand this message, Lord. And let it bring glory to your name, Lord, that the church of Jesus Christ might be edified, Lord, and exhorted, Lord, and corrected, Lord, so that we can go on to more of perfection, Lord, as the body of Christ, because we are certainly lacking walking in perfection as the body of Christ, Lord. We have a lot of area of growth as the body of Christ, Lord, and I believe this is an area that needs dealt with in the body of Christ, regardless of denominational wall, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that you've corrected my view on this holiday, Lord, over the years, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that as a result of this video, many other people's views will be corrected and their eyes will be opened of the darkness that is surrounding this holiday. And this is for your glory, Lord, not for my glory. And I thank you for this. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So let's get into this. First thing I also want to say is I'm not giving you a history lesson. If you want to know more about the origins of Halloween, go and look it up. But in short, I can tell you it is without a doubt of pagan origin. It is without a doubt of pagan origin. And you know, many other holidays that we celebrate are of pagan origin, such as Easter and even Christmas has pagan in it. And... We also not only have to look at if it's pagan origin, but what is the meaning behind it? What is the meaning behind all of this? And again, if you want to look at the history of how this holiday came about, do your research on that. I'm not going to give you a history lesson completely on this holiday. I'm just going to go over the biblical principles surrounding this holiday. So Halloween is a time of year in which it encourages communities to get together, and they get together for various traditions, festivals, such as trick-or-treat, and other various parties. Many families and friends get together for Halloween parties, and there's even certain festivals and certain things that are going on in towns for this holiday. And I'm not necessarily pointing out, you know, just the harvest or fall festivals going on, you know, such in my area, there's like certain craft shows or, you know, farmer's markets or stuff like that that doesn't even pertain to Halloween. It's just fall festivals, nothing relating at all to Halloween. And that kind of stuff I have no problem with. However, what I have a problem with, and I think really Christians should have a problem with, is this is a holiday in which we let children... Well, also, not only we let, but we also have a society that encourages children to dress up as ghosts, witches, warlocks, devils, comic and cartoon characters, and so on. 
Let me let me repeat that again for emphasis. Children dress up as ghosts, but not just children, adults will dress up as ghosts, witches, warlocks, and devils, and so on. And let me say that again, because it's very important. Children dress up as ghosts, witches, warlocks, and devils. You see a problem? You know, I mean, is it obvious, Christian? Is it obvious, Christian? Come on! Why are we allowing... Children, why are parents that are professing Jesus Christ allowing their kids to dress up like this? Come on! Come on! Is there anything wrong with this holiday from a Christian worldview? Absolutely. If you do not, then you do not have a strong foundation on Scripture. And that is the problem in most churches today. It is a church that is wrapped up in worldly tradition. And it needs to stop because we are getting so close to the coming of Jesus Christ. And you know what? I would hate to be a pastor that endorses Halloween activities in their church, let alone Easter events supporting pagan ideas. Let's look what the Bible says about sorcery and witchcraft, because that's what this holiday is all about. Children are dressing up as witches. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31 tells us, and I'm reading this from the Amplified Bible, Do not turn to mediums who pretend to be excuse me, who pretend to consult the dead or spiritists who have spirits of divination. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Now, I recognize that when children dress up as witches and warlocks and devils that they're not necessarily practicing witchcraft. Okay, I get that. But, here's something I want to say. You like a certain sports team, such as maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Jets. You know, if you support that sports team, if you support their players and, you know, the culture of that sports team, what's something you might do to show your support for that? You might wear a jersey. You know, you might wear a jersey, you might wear a hat or any other type of apparel. You might have a sticker on your car. What about if you like um, a certain political candidate? <laughs> we see many yard signs out for Donald Trump and many for Biden. I should say some for Biden, but if you support a political candidate, you're going to see yard signs out for them. You're going to see people with stickers on their car. They're going to wear shirts that say voting for Trump, voting for Biden. Okay, so if we support something, we usually will wear something that endorses it, or we might put something in the front of our yard that endorses it. Okay, so just think about the principle here. What are we doing here? If we're endorsing sports teams by, you know, putting on jerseys, what about when children dress up as witches and warlocks or when adults do? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. This is from the Message Translation. When you enter the land that your God is giving you, don't take on the abominable ways of life of the nations there. Don't you dare sacrifice your son or daughter in the fire. Don't practice divination, sorcery, fortune-telling, witchery, casting spells, pulling senses, or channeling with the dead. But people who do these things are an abomination to God. It's because of just the such abominable practices that God, your God, is driving these nations out before you. God did not tolerate this stuff in the Old Testament. He did not tolerate it. And one thing I want to point out, and, I, and this just doesn't even entail to the whole area of Halloween and whatnot. The New Testament says in Hebrews that God is a consuming fire. And one thing I want to point out is that the church today does not realize how holy our God is. And if you look at Nadab and Abihu in the Old Testament who brought strange fire to the Lord for worship, what happened to them? They were burned by the fire of God. You know, when people are professing to be Christian, 
are wrapping themselves in the things of darkness, God does not tolerate that. And you know, it is even more serious. God's holiness is more serious in a New Testament context compared to what we see in the Old Testament. And you know, I think people really need to wake up to how holy God is. He is a very holy God. People only like to talk about the love of God. And yes, that is an important part of God. That is an important characteristic, an important attribute of God, how loving he is. However, his love is a holy love. And he will not, by any means, let the guilty go unpunished. And like I said, I know that when people dress up as this, most of the time they're not, you know, practicing witchcraft, but they're dressing up as a witch or a warlock or a devil. But, you know, if the Bible says, explicitly says, that we should have nothing to do with witchcraft or sorcery, then why on earth will we dress up and represent it? Why would we dress up? and represent it for the sake of entertainment, or for the sake of having a good time. We obviously like something about it, because we just don't put on a jersey of a team that we don't like. You know, something very important. Very important. And we really gotta look at what we're representing as Christians. Because Christians are not doing a, the job that they should in representing what they should be standing for in this world today. The last few weeks I've actually been doing a very detailed study on the first letter of John. And in chapter 1 verse 6 it says, If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. I want to be blunt, I want to be brutally honest, celebrating Halloween and anything involving it is walking in darkness. Why would we be representing it? Another point I want to make is if you look in the Old Testament, you see people that have gone to sorcerers and they actually talk to people from the dead. We see this in 1 Samuel chapter 28 about Saul. He actually sought out a medium. To call up a dead spirit. We see numerous accounts of this. Of the power that is actually behind witchcraft and sorcery in the Bible. And people say, oh, you know, that stuff, that stuff's not real. If it was real back then, it is real today. <clears throat> the demonic realm has not changed. The demonic realm has not changed right now. It has not changed. And... We really gotta we really gotta look at this, Christians. We really gotta look at this. And you know, the church is literally in a shipwreck state. I hate to say it, the church is in a shipwreck state. And you know, it should you know, especially after COVID nineteen, well, even during COVID nineteen, we're still in the midst of it. You should be able to see how much of a shipwreck state the church is in. Ephesians chapter six, verse twelve tells us. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, and against the authorities, and against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual foes of the evil heavenly places. You know, if we want to be Bible-believing Christians and say we're doing Christian and say we're going to do biblical spiritual warfare, why on earth will we even endorse anything involving Halloween? Why? 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 Let me point on another perspective. How do you think the early church would have handled this holiday? I think it's very clear of especially how the apostles felt about paganism. They are very much against it. The teachings of Jesus go against what paganism is. And one thing I want to point out here with Halloween is there are churches that do trunk or treat. And I'm not saying that every case of how churches do that is wrong. I will grant that it is possible that there can be some genuine biblical evangelism done through trunk or treat. But we really got to look at the message we're sending. 
Excuse me. We really need to look at the message we're sending as Christians. You know, just like when it comes to other sins, such as lying or fornication, it comes to the same thing when it involves the things of darkness, witchcraft, and sorcery. And that's what Halloween is all wrapped around. That is, you know, the people are involved in the occult. That is their holiday. That is their holiday. And there are numerous, there is numerous news reports from 2018 that show that there is an estimated number of 1.5 million people practicing witchcraft in the United States today. And a sad perspective on that is that there is only 1.4 million people who profess to be Presbyterian. There are more practicing people in the United States practicing witchcraft and there are people who profess the Presbyterian faith. That's something really that should wake us up as Christians, that we do need to step it up. We need to step it up here. You know, we want to say that we're Bible-believing, that we're for revival and everything, and yet, you know, when it comes to the devil's holiday, we're all out there with the rest of the world. The problem today in the church is that you cannot tell the difference between someone that is sitting in a bar stool at a bar and someone that is sitting in a church pew. That is the exact problem with the church today. What kind of testimony is it? What kind of testimony is it to be at the bar scene? What kind of testimony is it? You know, we've painted such a church culture in evangelism that we have to kind of blend in with the rest of the world to evangelize. That's not how it works. we got to make sure we're representing the truth right. And, you know, if we're going to dress up as witches and warlocks and all that and say we profess Jesus Christ, we're contradicting what First John says in chapter 1, verse 6. I'll read again. If we say we have fellowship with Jesus Christ while we walk in darkness... We lie and do not practice the truth. You're representing darkness. You're walking right with it. You're walking right with the darkness of this holiday. There is no reason for a Bible-believing Christian to support this holiday. There's no reason. And, you know, I want to say one thing. There are a lot of hypocrites in the body of Christ. There's a lot of hypocrites. And you know, the body of Christ is often compared to, and scripture is often compared to a normal human body. And you know, it compares like the duty of the leg, the duty of the arm. And it compares the parts of the bodies to the various spiritual gifts. And you know, one thing I want to point out when it comes to looking at the body of Christ as compared to a human body is in a human body, if there is an organ that is foreign or something that's foreign, the body gets rid of it. At some point, it will get rid of it. Your body has an immune system that does that. There might be people in the church that are hypocrites. They're like foreign substances in the church. They're staying in the church, claiming to be part of the church, but they're truly not. They're hypocrites. They're foreign to the actual true church, and one day they will be separated. They will be separated from the actual true church. Hypocrites will be separated. And, you know, we're living in, it's been going on for years, but we're living in a time where there is a lot of hypocrisy in the church. There is a lot of hypocrisy going on in the church today. And it's not just with Halloween, it's with a lot of other things. And one other thing I'm going to point out, I've pointed out before, is the Harry Potter books. If your children are reading them, if you've read them, burn those books. Burn those books. I will have to put the link for the video. And I'll have to put the link for the video on my channel about a former witch that actually talks about the Harry Potter series. Is if you if you really look at this with the Harry Potter series, it is pretty much witchcraft dressed up as entertainment. And you know, that is exactly what the devil likes to do. He likes to make things look like they are entertainment, that they are okay to accept. And you know, it's just indoctrination of the occult. And another area I see where the occult is rising, not just 
you know, there's Christians that claim, that are claim to be Harry Potter fans. I don't know how you can be a Christian at the same time claim to be a Harry Potter fan. Because, you know, you're walking with the darkness of the devil, pretty much. Another thing is yoga. And there is an excellent documentary on yoga tied to the occult. And there, there's a lot with that. There's a lot with yoga and the occult. And we really got to be familiar with the stuff that is involved with the occult. And there, it's all New Age. It is all New Age. And New Age is making its way into the church. And we got to be very careful. We are living in the last days. And it says there is going to be a great falling away. You have churches that the Potter's House of T.D. Jakes, someone that many people look very highly up. They actually did yoga inside their church. They actually had a yoga session. I think it was at a women's retreat. I believe it was in 2019. It, was, it wasn't It was like super long ago. You can look it up on the internet. It's factual. There's even pictures of them practicing yoga. Yoga is of the occult. I don't have anything wrong with stretches, but yoga, that is of the occult. And I will have to put those documentaries on my channel somewhere. Excuse me. And we got to be aware of this as Christians. Because the devil is going to try to do everything he can to get Christians involved with this. Because when it comes, when it comes to the book of Revelation, when it talks about, you know, rapture and tribulation period. Tribulation period, that is going to be the time and period in which is the final battle pretty much between what God has ordained and the devil's counterfeit. And the devil is going to counterfeit everything God has ordained. It's going to look like Christianity. It'll look very much like Christianity, but it's not going to be Christianity. You know, it should be very concerning when you see Christian leaders trying to work together with other world religion leaders for the greater good. It should be very concerning. Because that is all making way for a one world religion system, which is what the devil wants. It is going to be a way to deceive people. And we see it taking place in many of these mega churches. And I think, you know, COVID 19 is being used to get people out of the mega church. And, you know, there are many, you know, I do not respect many of the mega church leaders out there. And I believe that in some of those churches that there are genuine believers. And I believe this is a way that God is using a situation to pull those people out of those churches so that they can be somewhere where there's much more sound doctrine than somewhere like Joel Osteen or T.D. Jakes. Um, many, it's very sad what's going on in the church world today. And, you know, it's all coming down to the final battle of what God has ordained and the devil's counterfeit, his one world religion system it is the harlot religion, the mystery of Babylon it is the harlot religion. And there's a lot of great videos on all this stuff that's going on, all these things that these church leaders are doing that should be very alarming, very alarming. And one thing I see that's common is, you know, people that are of different, you know, faith backgrounds, they want to work together for the greater good. And yeah, that might sound good, but that's ecumenalism. And that's very dangerous. Very dangerous. Because doctrine matters. And you know, some pastors, they don't like when you say the words doctrine and theology. And those are usually the ones that are in error or heresy. Um, we gotta be very firm on our doctrine and our theology. And... It's very important. We got to stand up for truth because part of spiritual warfare is actually standing up for the truth, the truth in the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that is the only thing that will save people. That is the only thing that's going to save people is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all this stuff that's going on with the occult pouring into the church should be very concerning to us. You know, <laughs> churches will not want to talk about Halloween. Not many pastors are going to call Halloween out. And you know what? I think it'd be very wise for pastors to call Halloween this year. I think it'd be very wise. The church needs to realize people need to be 
woken up to the truth. People need to be woken up to the truth. They need to realize the evil that is behind this holiday. And the evil that is behind the things in the occult. The church needs to know what the occult is. Because many people that are in the church are unknowingly following the occult. Many people are. The occult has, the churches, many churches especially, I'd say in the charismatic and Pentecostal circles are are practically partnering with the occult, bringing in new age or new thought teachings, the law of attraction. You see that coming into a lot of circles right now, and it's very sad. It is very sad, and it's very dangerous. It is very dangerous. And, you know, we are, you know, I've been saying this to people I've talked to that are Bible-believing Christians. Everything that is going on right now, this is such the perfect time for whoever the Antichrist is to rise, to come to power. This is the perfect storm for someone of that nature to rise to power. You know, I could be wrong. You know, this stuff cannot take place for another 20 years. I could be absolutely wrong. But you know what? The stage is really getting set for this person to rise to power. And regardless of what you believe, if you believe in pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, however your view is on all that stuff with the end times, the church has to be ready. We have to be preaching the gospel that leads to salvation, not the gospel of the devil that is dressed up like Christianity but isn't. We have to be preaching the true gospel because there are many people out there who are think they're walking in genuine Christianity and they're not. They're walking in something that is not of God. And we need to make sure we're getting the true gospel out and we're making people, especially people that are Bible-believing Christians, aware of what the occult world is because it is just going to grow more and more over time. And you know, the Bible says that before the end days, before the last days, things are not going to get any better. Things are not going to get any better. You know, I hear so many people saying about revival, but yet in the, in the Bible we see that Evil men are going to rise more and more. It's going to get worse. Things are going to get worse in this world. And the church has got to be ready. The church has to be ready. We're not going to be ready if we're not practicing truth. We have to know the truth and we have to be practicing the truth. We have to be doers of the word. And, you know, this message is a little rough. But it's the truth. And we have to take truth seriously you know people are like oh but my friends are having a halloween party come on you know what's more important a few hours at a party or your eternity come on come on be real that's what i have to say about halloween and a little bit on the occult i'm probably going to eventually throw a video together about the occult and how it's making its way into the church because I'm, I've honestly had it up to here with seeing many people fall privy to the occult stuff. It is very sad. It is, it's just very sad. And I think people need to be more and more aware of it. And it's very important that we know the truth, Christians. It's very important. I cannot stress that enough. You know, just seeing things that are going on in the world. You know, you know just everything that's going on. We're getting very close to the return of Jesus Christ. And, you know, if you aren't where you're supposed to be at with your faith in Jesus Christ, then now's the time to really get in your prayer closet and make things right and get in the Word. we got to be in the Word and we got to stand strong on the Word. And we got to have a solid foundation with our faith because we do not want to be shaken off our foundation when the devil's religious system comes in more stronger than ever before because it's going to come in. It might look like Christianity, but it's not going to be Christianity. And it's already been making its way into some churches. And I'll probably point that out in more detail in another video. But I just really want to encourage you. Do not be involved with Halloween. Do not be involved with Halloween. And I will... Be sure to link those other videos to my channels about Harry Potter and yoga. Because I think it's very important that Christians realize the danger that is behind both of those. Along, of course, with Halloween. And I encourage you, do your own research into 
into the background on Halloween, I encourage you to please do your own research. And, you know, if you've been walking incorrectly according to, you know, if you've been, let me rephrase that, if you've been going along with the world with the holiday of Halloween, you know, repent. Repent and flee from it. And get stronger, get a stronger foundation on the word. And that's just what I encourage you with. This is not the time to be playing games with God. This is not the time to be playing games with God. We gotta be serious, Christians. We gotta be serious. And, you know, I think regardless of the outcome of the election, I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of violence going on in this country. I think there's going to be a lot of violence regardless of who wins. And, you know, I can just tell from looking at how people are reacting to things that are taking place, regardless of what side of the political spectrum they stand on, people are really... They're really kind of, <laughs> they're about to lose it with what's going on. There's people that are very extreme liberal and very extreme conservative. And people, especially in those areas, it's, I think we're going to see some ugly stuff come out here. And I'm not, you know, giving a prophecy or anything like that, but I just see that as a pattern that I think that the violence is going to get worse. And we really need to be in God's word now more than ever before. And we have to be representing the faith well. We have to be representing our faith well because we don't want to misrepresent the gospel. That's not something Christians should be doing. And that's why I made this video about Halloween. And I will be making one about the occult because it's something that needs to be dealt with. It's something that needs to be dealt with because this is only going to get worse. This will only get worse. And we got to be ready. We got to be ready for what's going to be coming up because I think we're going to see something that we've never seen before in this country. I think we're going to see something that we've never seen before in this country. I know many other people I've talked to feel the same way. Um, and we just have to stand firm. We just have to stand firm. We've got to be in the Word of God. I cannot stress that enough. we got to be in the Word of God. And, you know, many people are getting busy, you know, with, you know, different things in life. Make sure you're making enough time to spend time in God's Word, enough time in prayer enough time in your private worship, make sure you're spending your time wisely and make sure that you're continuing to build upon your foundation that is built upon Jesus Christ. That is all I have for this teaching. I hope you have a great week. Please be sure to share this teaching because many people need to hear this. So once again, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and be sure to hit the bell button also so you get notified of future videos. So once again, thank you for watching. God bless you and have a great week and please stay safe.